Welcome to your lecture on understanding pacemakers, defibrillators, and synchronized cardioversion. This video should be on YouTube for the practical nursing class at the UBATC. So first off, we're going to say what is a pacemaker. You need to understand that a pacemaker is a sophisticated device. It has computerized electronical parts uh, and it can be adjusted with a magnet. It is also considered a pulse generator, meaning that it will generate the electrical impulse in the heart to create a heartbeat. And you also need to know that there are various types of pacemakers. So some of the types of pacemakers include basically permanent and temporary. When you look at a permanent pacemaker, you can have simply a pacemaker, which can have one or two wires, or you can have a combination um, pacemaker and defibrillator, which is called an ICD, which stands for implantable cardioverter defibrillator. Uh, if you look in the corner of your screen, you can see what is an implanted pacemaker. They're about the size of a silver dollar, a little thicker, and you will see that this particular picture has two leads, which means it's considered a two-lead pacemaker as opposed to a one-lead, single-lead pacemaker. When you talk about a temporary pacemaker, there are two different kinds. There are transcutaneous, so that trans is across and cutaneous is the skin, so it would go through the skin and the tissues to the heart, or there's an intravenous. Uh, the intravenous actually goes into the heart by wire and is managed by uh, a portable um, pulse generator. Now in the picture below, you can see that there is a dual per chamber and a single chamber pulse generators. Those are used only temporarily. Uh, they're better for the patient than a transcutaneous because it's not going through the skin and causing the pain from the shock, but it is still considered a temporary um, device until a permanent pacemaker can be implanted. Now there are some pacemaker terms that you need to understand. When we say asynchronous pacemaker, or pacing, that is a pacemaker which delivers that stimulus to the heart at a set rate regardless of what the heart rate is. So if the pacemaker is set to beat at 70 beats a minute and the person is having a heart rate of 66 beats a minute, it will continue to pace at all times. Now a demand pacemaker is one that actually can sense the rate. So if it's supposed to beat at, we'll say 65 beats a minute, and it can tell the heart is beating at say 68 beats a minute or 65 beats a minute, it will not generate a pulse. Those are very useful for some people that just have a low heart rate occasionally. Um, the single chamber pacemaker versus a dual chamber pacemaker. Again, the single chamber or single wire pacemaker only causes one of the ventricles to beat, uh, get the electrical impulse, whereas the dual chamber will um, Im send an impulse to both the atrial chambers and the ventricular chambers. If you look at the picture on your screen, you can see that there is a wire here that ends in the right ventricle and it will cause the electrical pulse to enter the right ventricle and that electrical pulse will cross the septum here and also cause the left vent, the left, left atrium to beat. And if you see the second wire comes down here to the right ventricle and that electrical impulse would cross that muscle right there and cause the left ventricle to beat as well. So it's also called sometimes an AV pacemaker where it would stimulate the atrial chambers and the ventricular pace chambers to beat. Sensing is the pacemaker's ability to identify and respond to intrinsic cardiac activity, cardiac activity. So it senses the natural heartbeat of the heart. And sometimes the sensing is not working and so it can't tell what is going on with the heart. 
Capture is the ability of the pacemaking stimulus to cause a cardiac depolarization or a cardiac beat. So uh, it has to have enough electrical stimulus to cause the heart to actually contract. So that's one of the things they have to monitor when they're inserting a pacemaker to make sure you have just the right amount of electricity being generated to cause a beat. We don't want to have too high of a um, electrical impulse. We, it, we just want it to be exactly enough. So when pacemakers are working and you look at the cardiac rhythm, they create something called a pacer spike. And that is the contraction of the pacemaker that can be read on the, on the rhythm strip. So if you look at the top strip, you can see these spikes right here. And the, this is a single chamber um, pacemaker because it's only causing the ventricles to contract. You see, we don't have any um, P waves, which we'll talk about in class, but there's just one spike, so I know that this is a single wire pacemaker. Now, if you look at the bottom rhythm, you can see that there are two spikes. So this is a dual chamber or an AV pacemaker. If you look at that bottom rhythm strip, you will see that there's also no response to the pacing. So um, this is probably having a failure of both sensing and capture. So we can have the beats there, but with no cardiac response. We're going to talk a little bit about synchronized cardioversion. Synchronized cardioversion version is easy to remember because it's synchronized with the heartbeat. And the reason for that is if somebody has a heartbeat, but it's just a arrhythmia that's causing them problems such as rapid um, atrial fibrillation, we want to convert that to a better heartbeat for the patient. So it's synchronized to fall with the heartbeat. Now if you look at the strip below, you can see that there is this shaded area where the synchronized counter shock must be delivered. If we put it so that it is syncing on the T wave, so, so in other words, if we shocked this person and it wasn't synchronized, we could po potentially fall on this T wave at the bottom. And you'll see it says vulnerable period, because if we shock during that period of time, we can throw this person into a lethal arrhythmia, which is why we want to sync it. It usually starts at a lower energy setting, so we're using less energy to shock the heart with, which is good, um, and is used to reverse both atrial and ventricular dysrhythmias, not lethal dysrhythmias, but ones that are causing the patient distress. Now the other thing about a synchronized cardioversion, you'll see here where it says sync marker. I'll show you that on the next slide. When the sync button is activated, it makes a mark on the rhythm strip. So when you've turned your defibrillator on, which all your defibrillator machine itself synchronizes cardioversion and defibrillation, you just have to hit a single button to indicate that. I know as a nurse that the sync button is activated when I see these triangles right above the beat. And you can see each beat has a has a mark with it. So I know if we shock to this person right now that they would um, have it synchronized. If there's no little button there, it doesn't count. Now defibrillation is different because it's an electro shock, electrical shock to correct lethal arrhythmias. It is not synced to the heart rate because really they don't have a heart rate. And it Think of it as resetting the electrical impulses in the heart. It will actually stop the heart and allow the heart to reset itself. So I like to think of defibrillation as rebooting the heart. When your computer is going all crazy and you can't get it to work like right, what we do is we turn it off and allow it to reboot and then we turn it back on and then it works fine. Cardioversion is similar to that. Now if you look at the picture on your screen, the, here's your transcutaneous method of um, administering defibrillation. It goes through the skin. We could also, there are patches we can apply which we would use for pacing or we can use them for defibrillation. They actually stick to the chest.
Now here you can see this lethal arrhythmia. There's no heartbeat. The patient would not have a pulse. And then we shock the patient. They go into a period of no heartbeat and then their heart has rebooted and they have a normal heartbeat again, or so we hope. To conclude this lecture, there is a video I would like all of you to watch on YouTube. It is actually a surgical procedure where you can see a pacemaker implanted into a patient and the physician walks you through it as he completes it. Um, I will also post this uh, YouTube web link on your Canvas site. Thank you very much.